Some of the most interested fans in watching these games are the kids on the other teams, Puerto Rico's players. They've got a game coming up at 6 o'clock. They're going to take on Germany, a team from uh, Ranheim Air's base. And uh, those youngsters are watching this one. A 3 nothing lead. Texas leading it over Minnesota. Let's check in with Adriana. Hi, guys. I'm here with Jesus Gutierrez, which is uh, the father of Jorge Gutierrez, which is a short stop from Team Minnesota. He's from Venezuela, and he used to. he's a former player, baseball player from there. Uh, how does it feel, Jorge, to, to, to be your son? Follow step your steps. Oh, it feels it feels so so great. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of them. I mean, especially because uh, this is a kid's dream. You know what I mean? And um, as long as you keep the kids uh, um, busy playing baseball and uh, or any other kind of sport, you are gonna keep them out of drugs, which is so I mean beautiful. You know what I mean? I think ESPN is uh, doing a great job with the kids with deals up. Uh, beautiful country and um that's it that's great i i know that you are not a fan to fly so i know you drove back from texas the whole way so how was it yes ma'am i am one of the um more afraid guys to fly i mean i'm so scared to fly i, I just cannot do it i mean um that's what i drove here i mean i'm i can't i can so do it how many hours are you going to take there oh uh, well what's up Pretty, pretty nice and beautiful trip to get here. Um, uh, it takes me uh, 23, 24 hours, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm happy. Of course you're happy, you're seeing your son, so that was a lot of drive, but it was worth it. So back to you guys. All right, uh, he, his wife flew, <laughs> needless to say, got here a little early. There's his son, but as you so well put it, I hate to fly. And uh, Bryce Vasari is going to be retired on the ground ball. Well, not only, they, away. not only are they kidding about being scared to fly, but they're kidding him about how slow he drives. <laughs> that too. But he got here on time. He got here. He was here for the game. Everything worked out fine. And he's got a great perspective on why they have the kids involved in sports and Little League Baseball. Yeah. Here's Matthew Betancourt, the 12 year old. We're talking about the kids who have birthdays right around this time. His birthday was uh, August 20. He'll be uh, 13 years old. And Betancourt, get behind on the count here. He's batting in the number nine spot, playing in center field in the ball game. These kids put down their uh, nicknames. Give us all kind of information, the stuff you see, what they eat, what they like, and all that kind of stuff. And other kids also like to contribute on their teammates. This kid's nickname is Chewy. That's uh, Matthew Bettencourt because he eats his glove. He's always got the fingers of the glove going out in the outfield. Everyone goes without that. saying that his favorite food is pork chops. <laughs> Leather. <laughs> Leather and pork chops. So his teammates wanted to be sure that everybody knew. He probably likes his pork chops well done, too, because uh, they taste like leather, then. 2-1 <laughs> delivery on the way. There is no mercy shown in sports at any level. <laughs> and the count goes to 3-1 and one on Bettencourt. Judy on hand watching. Her son. Matthew's mom. Got to ask her about the pork chop recipe. That's right. Oh. And he is going to be on with a walk. Second walk that uh, Nick Tool has surrendered. We'd like to show you where these kids are from, starting where we are. Here at uh, Williamsport, the site of the Little League World Series. We take you down to Austin, Texas, and Pearland, Texas. Not far away. That's where these kids are from. And uh, first chance for for these kids to be involved in this particular town. 86,000, 19 miles south of Houston and their first Little League appearance. That's for this city in this particular Little League program. It gets a bit confusing sometimes, I know, because we talk about they represent a region, they also come out of a city, they also come out of the state that we generally use as the term, a district, and they're out of a Little League program itself. Right. You get all that together, and that's why we end up with Texas against Minnesota. That one to second base. <laughs> Rebutton will put the tag on, and not quite. Good chance to try and get a double play. He did get the tag on the base runner, Bettencourt, as he went by. So it'll be a fielder's choice for Bo Orlando. 
Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting time to bring up the possible instant replay rule because the coaches all have one opportunity each to call for an instant replay and you can call for it on a bang bang play you can call for it on a missed tag so right here that could have been called for and as long as the coach who challenges it gets his challenge right he retains the right to ask for a replay again the moment that he asks for a replay and it's wrong he loses that opportunity for the rest of the game Ball. And the um, and along with that, the umpires at any time can, can do it themselves. Can do it themselves many times as they want. Yeah. So there are a number of ways to get to the replay, which has been vastly expanded this year as to what it covers. That is a fair ball down the line. Blake Toller try to get it out of the eye. Throw will come in to third. He will end up with a double. So Bo Orlando goes over to third base. Toller's got a double coming with two away here in the second inning. Now the uh, the video replay play rule, as we said, this year has been uh, e expanded enormously. Applies to the games televised, which is just about all of them. Limited in the past two years to those that resulted in a dead ball. Uh, otherwise, the umpires asking for it. Only the umpires could send a play to video review. Now, expanded more plays, force outs, tags, miss bases, hit batters. All of those are subject to being reviewed at the request of the umpire or on that opportunity to ask for it by the manager in a manager's challenge. And if there are extra innings, there's one more challenge that's allowed. So even if the challenge is used up during the regular innings, you get another one for the extra innings. And every final play is reviewed, period. So if you got all that, there'll be a test here in an hour. Uh, it's. It's one of those things that as the uh, Little League World Series goes along, for all of us, we're just going to have to see how it plays out, how much it impacts on the game, if at all, how many times there are reviews asked for by either the umpires or the managers. You just don't know when the rule is expanded that way what the impact's going to be. Two in scoring position here. Texas has got the 3-0 lead with the home runs in the first inning. As uh, Blake Toller's had a home run and a double now, he's out there at second base, already getting two at bats and only in the second inning. Orlando oh. is on at third. And the base hit here could give Texas uh, a 5 nothing lead in this game. Here, Jorge Gary. Gutierrez up. That, gear, that video replay had been started and instituted back in 2008. It was only on home run calls. And then in 2009, it, it extended into fair and foul calls. Oh, that's going to be a base hit. One run will score, two runs will score. Orlando, Blake Toller come in. Jorge Gutierrez will go into second base. And Dad and Mom, no matter how they got here, are celebrating right now. It is a 5 nothing lead for Texas. Well, no replay needed on that. That was a clean base hit over the shortstop's head. It was very good swing, nice level stroke. The bat stays on the plane of the ball for a long time. You see that bat sweep through the strike zone, stay the same height, and you see just out of the reach of the shortstop. Drive in a couple of RBI stakes and check this ball. One relay man, two relay man, three relay, four, four, and finally the catcher got it. <laughs> So Texas putting on a show here in this really part of this game number one for them as a team they hit 397 in the regionals and they uh, plated some 38 uh, five doubles 50 hits 47 runs in the regionals so they, they put up some solid numbers offensively and boy are they doing it here. And that will be bounced. Runner will stay. The runner cannot leave the bag until the ball reaches the batter. It's another new rule. I'm not sure. It's a pretty fine rule change between the time it reaches the plate or the time it reaches the batter. But I guess if you're standing up in front of the box. Well, it gives the umpires a little leniency. And gives them the ability to kind of judge where they see the ball compared to the batter. Oh. And we take it inside. Mason Van Nord, who is doing the pitching, chance to help his own cause with a runner on at second base and two out. A three ball, one strike count on him. Nick Toole has had a struggle here early on with the five runs on four hits and a couple of walks down to third. That'll be a foul ball. Right, 
You know, just to put a button on the instant replay rule, instituted in 2008, come 2009, you think, well, it slows the game down, you know, oh, we're going to have to wait for things. Well, they've only used it twice in 2008 and twice in 2009. Now that we've expanded it and there's a lot more plays involved, we'll see that it was used earlier once today in game one, in the earlier game with Connecticut. That one is towards the middle. That will be a base hit. Wenzel up with it, a runner coming to the plate. They're gonna send him back to third. And as a result, going down to second base, Van North. Good throw by Lucas Wenzel in center field to save another run, at least for the moment. Well, back in 2006, Little League moved back defenses from 205 to 225, and they said it would bring in doubles and triples and defense by the outfielders, and Lucas Wenzel really proved right there that he is a good little center fielder. Defenses are back deeper. Those home runs have been hit a long way, but Lucas charged that ball very, very hard, and he showed off his strong arm. And that will bring up Jake Orlando, and here's another uh, big at bat. We're going to get a timeout, and we may get a pitching change here. Looks like uh, Luston, the first baseman, is going to come on to do the pitching for Nick Toole, who will come out of the ball game as this Texas team is showing some offense. Five runs, five hits, and a 5 nothing lead over Minnesota. 